Okay, welcome back everyone. Our event today would not be possible without our sponsors. Our platinum sponsor, Capita Group, has been an amazing partner, um, especially as we launch our new LMU Family Business Entrepreneurship Center. Wanted to share a quick video to highlight them. Early on, we start building our inner circle with people we can trust and turn to for support and advice. People we meet at every stage of our lives, from study groups and group chats to fundraising and raising capital. As our lives expand, so does our inner circle, filled with family, friends, colleagues, and business partners that we can count on, all having one thing in common. They earned their way in by being there, through good times and bad. It's the same approach we take every day to earn our clients' trust, and how we've made wealth management about so much more than wealth. With global research and insights that come from being part of the Capital Group family, Capital Group Private Client Services seeks to deliver premium investment management and exceptional service centered around you, going above and beyond for our clients because they are our inner circle, bringing a deeply personal level of attention and dedication to you, your loved ones, and your legacy, cultivating relationships over decades, not just dinners, because to us, the inner circle is about earning and keeping your trust, understanding and sharing in what you care about. Our focus is on working with you and your family to become better stewards of your wealth, so you can live for today while preparing for tomorrow. Because at Capital Group Private Client Services, numbers mean the world to us, but people matter even more. What a great video from Capital Group. I really appreciated just the human connection that they valued and dedication um, and trust that we have in them. Now, I would like to call up John Benham. He's the Senior Vice President and Private Wealth Advisor for Capital Group Private Client Services. I've had the pleasure of getting to know him and he's been our number one fan and so excited and we really appreciate your partnership and he is going to be introducing our keynote speaker take it away john thank you very much darlene um, i have the pleasure of introducing our speaker at lunch today and that's andrew churn andrew is the co-founder and co-chairman of panda restaurant management group which was started back in 1973 when andrew and his father opened a restaurant on, in Pasadena on Foothill Boulevard called Panda Inn. 10 years later in 1983, Andrew and his wife Peggy opened their first Panda Express. Fast forward today, there are more than 2,400 Panda Expresses. There are 43,000 associates that work for the organization and the Panda Express organization generates $4.5 billion in sales. Panda Restaurant Group is one of the largest family-owned businesses in America. A secret behind Panda's business success is its dedication to developing not only the employee's professional life, but their personal life as well. In 2020, uh, Panda Express was ranked number 39 in Fortune's Best Workplaces for Women and number 41 in Fortune's Best Workplaces for Millennials. Andrew and Peggy, have also been amazingly generous in their philanthropic efforts. In 1999, the Churns created Panda Cares, which has given over $250 million towards education, health, and disaster relief. Last year alone, Panda Cares together with the Churns donated $2 million towards personal protection equipment for medical workers and $2 million to Feeding America. We are so fortunate to have with us today Andrew Churn, who will be interviewed by Professor David Choi, Conrad Hilton Professor of Entrepreneurship at LMU. And before I turn it over, I just wanted you to know what I'm gonna be doing 
while I am <laughs> listening to you. My favorite combo of crispy almond chicken and orange chicken. Thank you. I'll turn it over to you, David. Thank you, John. Thank you for the introduction. I'm David Choi, uh, Hilton Chair of Entrepreneurship at LMU. I'm here with our keynote speaker, Andrew Chern, co-founder, co-CEO, and co-chairman of Panda Restaurant Management. Andrew, thank you for being here. It's a great to well, have you. Thank you very much, Dr. Cho. Oh, thank you also uh, uh, for the uh, kind introduction uh, with John. And we were about to chit chat and then we have to uh, get on the phone again and uh, finish our a little <laughs> talk. Thank really you for, uh, uh, you know, eating our food. <laughs> thank you it. for supporting us. Always. And we've got a bunch of people actually on the call eating panda right now. Um, you are also traveling right now. You're calling in from uh, Utah, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you for making time even in, during your uh, business uh, business trip. Yeah, you know, um, our business is everywhere. And uh, one of my favorite activities is to go out and visit our people and see how they're doing. And I'm happy to report that uh, the state of Utah is very prosperous. The housing market is really hot. Yeah. And uh, one of our uh, goals for our people is to buy and own homes. And so last night I heard uh, our people are you know, doing really well and uh, building their equities in their ownerships and the, the homes, the houses. I say houses, you know, many of the people uh, own more than one. And so um, that's how they invest into a better life for their family. Well, Andrew, I know uh, how much you care about your employees and we're gonna get to that. Uh, but let me ask you, when you visit these stores, you probably, some of the employees probably don't know you're gonna visit them. Uh, how do they react to you? Do they get surprised? Are they, are are they star-studded or what happens? No, actually, uh, it is, you know, all, the, all of my trips really are a plan. So there's no surprises. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we want to catch people doing the good things, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and keep doing the good things, right? Yeah. You know, so um, I, I think people are generally a very positive. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they like uh, to see people that they who are these people that you're working with, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, who are you? And, and uh, I also get to meet our operators and to, uh, you know, to see uh, what their needs are and uh, to get to know them. Uh, we spend some time uh, talking about their personal lives as well as you know, what are the challenges, you know, in business and what can we support? You know, what can we do to support their operations? And what can we do, you know, from, uh, from far away, right? Yeah. And, we're uh, mm -hmm. No, we're getting a little bit off topic, except we're going to actually get to that later. But, you know, some CEOs don't like to get out of their corporate headquarters. You like going to stores and talking to employees. Um, why, do, why is that important for you? Well, you know, we're in the people business. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, my belief is when we do well, when we do well personally, our employees, and we call them associates, when they do well personally, and they will then have the, uh, capability to treat other people likewise right mm -hmm. and so uh, we start with uh, with our employees yeah i know it's amazing and we're going to get to that because i love that topic and i want to focus on that too but uh, so you know i think people are getting a taste of what we're going to discuss everybody knows about the great uh products you've created the great brand you've created you and peggy and the team of course but few people know what a great leader you are, what kind of philosophy you have about business and education, what a great educator you are. So I'm so excited to share your story 
Um, I am very, very, uh, very, very excited. So I'll start the interview, uh, you know, a little about you, so people get to know you, your business, mm -hmm. and then your family, and then we'll discuss your extended family, which is your employees, if that's okay. Of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, Looking start, forward, yes. Yeah. Let's start mm -hmm. from the very beginning. So you immigrated to the U.S. when you're about 18 years old, about college age. So I think you started college in, uh, soon after and you majored in mathematics. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> and then you actually even did a graduate degree in, uh, in mathematics, applied math at the University of Missouri, right? Yes. Now, it, it looks like it was a great uh, choice of education because did you meet your wife at University of Missouri or uh, before? How did you meet? Well, we met we met at college and we uh then we uh, got back together and uh, went to university of missouri and she is absolutely uh, the brain of the house right you know she <laughs> um she's a better student and uh you know she has a phd and i don't yeah, yeah so yeah. you know uh and i like to do business so it works out well yeah yeah no, she she does seem very smart she's got a ph in electrical engineering among other things and so you and your wife you moved to uh pasadena at some point and your first business i think panda in on foothill it's it's a family business when you started right uh, multiple people yes. in your family involved the whole family you know i have a uh you know my parents of course you know and uh, um, I have a sister and a brother, and, uh, and we work together um, as a family, you know, mm -hmm. basically not getting paid uh, for, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The downside of you that know, for many, uh, you know, for, for a while, you know, for a long time, actually. Yeah. 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 And besides not getting paid, anything else you remember uh, in that, in those years as you worked together as a family? Yeah, we worked well together. You know, my dad was a great role model. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he gets up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. He'll show up at work, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, many hours before uh, mm -hmm. all the other uh, mm -hmm. staff comes in. He'll, mm -hmm. You know, he'll wash the dishes from the day before. Mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, and then she'll, he'll start the soup. And, and, you know, start the day, basically. And uh, he probably, um, I would say, he probably, on average, he probably put in like 15 hours a day, you mm -hmm. know, regularly. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't like to have a day off, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, the way he takes uh, a day off is he plays mahjong after. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. So he's never uh, absent from work. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, you know, I actually never thought about this, but so did you learn some lessons from him about how to be a leader? You know, I worked in the restaurant mm -hmm. uh, off and on mm -hmm. all during uh, my college years and even during graduate school mm -hmm. in New York. And typically, you know, chef like my dad, mm -hmm. okay, typically they're pretty hot tempered. <laughs> Yeah. And when there's a mistake, you know, oh, yeah. and you know, there's usually the, the voice gets a little louder, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a little screamish, the screaming going on and so mm -hmm. forth, right? You know, and when we're very busy, my dad, my dad is absolutely really calm. You know, he would just calm everybody down and he said, you know, hey, let's do it over again. You mm -hmm. know, he's that kind of individual. Mm -hmm. So I you know, it's it's just a, you know, he works hard, and he has a great capacity to deal with, you know, the pressure that is, you know, on right now. You know, so he's been a, you know, he, he was a great role model for me. No, it seems like it. I I know you also cool under pressure, so I think I feel like you must have learned something there. Um, after ten. Yeah, 10 years after you founded uh, Panda Inn and, and Pasadena, you got a little breakout, say, and you got, you got able to start Panda Express at the Glendale Galleria. 
Mm -hmm. And at the time you started, I think, working even more formally with your wife who had quit her job in engineering and uh, really joined the business. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, what's interesting, one of your podcasts that I listened to, uh, you said uh, your wife, by the way, is the most loving person, but your relationship with her has been sometimes been challenging. You call it a challenging relationship that caused you to, uh, develop, you know, sort of push each other and develop each other. Could you uh, expand on that? Well, you know, um, it's not a secret that, you know, living together, uh, <laughs> you know, as husband and wife and working together, mm -hmm. even though we have a different aspect of uh, responsibility, you know, when it comes to uh, people decisions and some of the, um, you know, uh, we actually probably differ some, somewhat from how we treat our people, how we want to treat our people. And, uh, you know, so there is, you know, sometime a, a disagreement, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think uh, uh, I would say we worked through it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say probably I would not recommend, you know, uh, to work with your spouse. You know? <laughs> and uh, at least in my case, <laughs> you know, fortunately, yeah. we, uh, you know, we, we, we did uh, quite a bit of, uh, you know, a continuous learning mm -hmm. you know, in, in some organizations like uh, uh, Vistaridge, you know, it's called today, you know, so, and mm -hmm. we get coaching and uh, so we learn how to deal with each other on a more effective basis. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised you continued uh, teaching yourself new things because that you certainly, I know you read a lot of books because I remember when I met you 10 years ago or something, you gave me a bunch of books to read. So. Um, I, I know you love to read and develop yourself. Speaking of a uh, family, I know you have three daughters. One appears very involved with the business. I think one is active with the uh, trust. Um, did you always want your daughters in one way or another to be involved with the business? No, not at all. Not at all. I, um, you know, I think the restaurant business is a very time consuming, you know, as and uh, very, uh, there's a lot to do. And, you know, basically when we started the business, we just think it's going to be a, you know, just a couple of restaurants, right? You know, right. And who's thinking about you know, having your kids involved? And, you know, so, well, you know, um, the business grew and, uh, you know, with our uh, oldest daughter, Andrea, Mm -hmm. And, you know, she happened to like to, to do or try, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, we probably as parents, we don't want to put too much pressure mm -hmm. on our kids. Mm -hmm. And with Andrea, especially, she's so responsible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we just leave her alone. And, you know, and, and um, I think I think as a family member, they all have the pride. They want to do a good job. I mean, she mm -hmm. wants to do a good job. Mm -hmm. And she puts a lot of pressure on herself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you were happy to say she's really getting into it. She's quite involved. She's not only uh, our brand ambassador, you know, she also is very involved with our operation people especially during the uh, pandemic. And so, and, you know, so uh, she's going from, you know, just kind of marketing person into more of a, you know, holistically into our business and it's uh, doing a great job. No, I could tell Andrea is multi-talented. You know, I listen to her podcast with you sometimes. And by the way, I'd recommend everybody to listen to Panda Expressed. Amazing, amazing lessons. She's so Thank good you. at this uh, interview. She's like, I thought she was a professional. And I later found out it was your daughter. Um, She's also professional. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, but I like, you know, I thought she was a radio personality. Uh -huh. but, um, but, you know, in one of her uh, articles, she actually thought she was a little bit pressured by you. She's, I think uh, one time when you visited her in college or grad school, you asked her, hey, 
Andrea, how are you going to take care of our people? She says you asked her that question. You remember asking that? Oh, I probably do that all the time. <laughs> okay. uh, but yeah. with Andrea, she's very, uh, she's actually very people oriented. Mm -hmm. You know, she is very thorough and she cares. Mm -hmm. And now people will attest to that, I think, you know. And, uh, um, you know, I'm probably much more like result oriented. Sometimes I forget the process, you know, but she definitely is much more attentive. You know, one of the things she also said in one of the articles, and this sounds like something you would have said. She said, one of the rules or one of the maxims in our family is that family serves the business and the business doesn't serve the family. Mm -hmm. And what did you mean by that? Well, you know, we have the, uh, the fortunate, we are blessed because our business has been uh, very successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only uh, our business have done well, I think that we have, we have done, the way, have, the way we, have, we have gone about it, it worked out really well, mm -hmm. you know? And my father, you know, early on said, you know, when you're nice to people, you know, be nice to them, and also be nice to their pocketbooks. So that I believe very, very deeply. And so with what we do, you know, we, you know, I would say, I'm very proud to say that we have done that. You know, our people, are, you know, we, I, th I think our people are very well paid mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they can earn big bonuses. And one of our, our one of our objective is to help as many people that work for Panda to own a home. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when you look around in LA, you know, there's so many homeless and everywhere else, there's so many people mm -hmm. that, you know, it's amazing that, you know, that there are so many people that it's, that doesn't have a home to go back to, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, you know, when we can, when we're younger, if we buy a home and you know, by the time we retire, the home is paid off, you know, I mm -hmm. mean, you know, yep. life becomes much more secure, right? Right. And so, um, you know, things like that, you know, uh, we want our people to do well first for themselves and then for their family. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they have the, then they have the, extra, uh, you know, energy to deal with the business uh, yep. at work. Yep. Just to finish off the family and we'll go to your, you know, your organization because I think that that's so fascinating. And by the way, I love your very practical view of how you, you know, want to help your employees. Um, another similar thing you said to Andrea is, you said um, leadership is not inherited. Um, meaning that family member needs to be, you know, qualified to be involved with the family business. Um, is that something you really instilled in your children? Well, you know, um, uh, I don't believe that because, you know, you're born in this family, then you can, you have extra privilege. Mm -hmm. We're already privileged. Mm -hmm. So putting the people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, putting the right people in the place that's appropriate. To me, there has to be, you know, the capability and uh, you know, the, the, the capability and the responsibility really have to match. Yep. And there is no free lunch. I mean, I think uh, you know, our business, you know, there are many issues that comes up. And I would say a lot of our issues are people-based, right? You know, mm -hmm. we're, and we are really um, wanting to uh, make sure that, uh, our, you know, the way we deal with people, there's very transparent and uh, not, you know, uh, without nepotism. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, let's let's talk about your extended family, your your associates. You know, um, I often hear you and Peggy say that you see your employees as family. Also, I think uh, maybe not many people know the mission of Panda Express or Panda Restaurant Management, which is to deliver exceptional Asian dining experiences by building an organization where people are inspired to better their lives. I think you even once said, you're not selling Chinese food, that's not your purpose. Your purpose is to develop people. So could you expand on that please? Well, you know, we do sell, um, we do sell Chinese food. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, I think when we do a better job developing people so they will have more capability to deal with life. Mm-hmm. And when our life is in a good place, then I think you know you treat each other better and the work gets done with teamwork and everything is better that way. And the, the reality is when our people are educated, are trained, well trained. When when people um, is aware of their own issues, for example, you know, like, you know, I need to improve. Uh, I take responsibility. And when people do that, the work relationship is much different. You know, uh, so in the last, I don't know, you know, we try to do that constantly because there's always a level of excellence you know how do we uh, how do we uh, develop our awareness mm-hmm. and how do you you know um, everybody's selfish in some ways right and and uh, our job is to make sure that uh, that people recognize that you actually have other people's interests at heart, you know? So uh, other than yourself, you know, actually it works very differently is when I do a better job treating our people Mm -hmm. and getting their cooperation, I benefit from it, you know? So this is not just about me. This is not just about selling Chinese food, you know, to, you know, and, and we're really learning how to, how to get along as a team, how to work together, how to create value together, how to help people to see what they're not seeing in their, in their own possibilities. You know, we, and we do that a lot. Uh, you know, most of our, people are, I would say, uh, most of our employees are not college educated, Mm -hmm. you know, very, in fact, you know, very, very few of our managers are, you know, uh, so we really act like an educator, you know, our people, I would say, you know, typically our people are, uh, they work hard, Mm -hmm. you know, they work hard, they're very, they're very reliable, you know, at the same time, most of our uh, people, they don't think they can do more. They don't want to be a manager because they don't know if they can handle that work. So, you know, so we have to, like, train them to convince them, to show them, like, hey, you're doing the work, okay? And this is how have you have, to, you know, this is how you have to think and see things differently. So we're educating them to take responsibility and own the responsibility differently. And, you know, there's a slow process, you know, and, you know, I constantly get people to say, you know, when I started, you know, I was afraid, I didn't think I could do it. You know, now they're running, you know, 10, 10 15, or sometimes 100 restaurants, you know, because, they're very responsible people. They put in the time, they put in their effort, and they're improving themselves 
so they can handle the work or they handle the responsibility at hand. You know, if you see one of your associates, you know, coming, like you mentioned, maybe after high school education, you see them develop into store managers, regional managers. That must be so satisfying for you. Of course, you know, I think it's, you know, I, I think we arrived here uh, last night uh, in Salt Lake at midnight, you know, and we had a little gathering, you know, uh, amongst our management people here. Mm -hmm. And we have some visitors also. I would say the atmosphere is awfully good. It was really very good mm -hmm. and very warm. Mm -hmm. and, and people are really uh, happy that that they're doing well. Mm -hmm. uh, they're in Utah mm -hmm. and they are, uh, the environment is doing well. You mm -hmm. know, uh, there's prospering. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the opportunities are here, mm -hmm. you know, and we're in everywhere, right? You know, we're everywhere in the United States. Yeah. And there's so many stories like that. You yeah. know, I'll basically, you know, we're, our job is basically to do well in whatever we have, you know, and Panda happened to be our main job. You know, our job it really is, you know, to, uh, to be in business and to figure out how we can uh, do things more effectively, mm -hmm. use less effort mm -hmm. and uh, get maximum return. Mm -hmm. You know, what people listening to this might not realize is the training that you provide, most of the training that I've seen is not even about how to be a better employee in the company, although that's part of it. Big part of your training is basically how to transform themselves into being better human beings, better, more productive people. So it's more about mindset and, and personal improvement, not just business or job skills. Well, not only about job skills, right? Yeah, you, yeah. Know, you know, and... You know, supervision is kind of a funny thing. You know, like you want, uh, we need to be uh, updated. We need to keep up. As a leader, we need to keep up. Mm -hmm. And sometime after a while, you know, um, you could talk. Your talk is better than your do or your, your show up, right? You know, as a, as a supervisor from, from, you know, I, I would say speaking from experience, you know, I used to be able to turn over this table at Panda Inn at a very quick pace. Yeah, yeah. You know, now I go back to Panda Inn, you know, uh, you know I, I've, I've lost a lot I of lost this, the right? skills. You know, I lost, <laughs> but, yeah. you, know, to, you know, to keep that up is, is actually very, very important. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think we are... Uh, you know, we think we are still very good. We still need to, like, get out, get, you know, get in the front line to deal with things and to practice so we don't forget where we come from. So, you know, um, we like to say we run a good operations. Mm -hmm. And running a good operation is, is basically, you know, you're in the front line. Mm -hmm. and what do you have to do? You know, uh, what do you have to do? Uh, on a daily basis is, you know, you really have to model, you know, what you have to model what you want to see from the, your teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you invest a lot of time and effort into employees, you send them to programs, you, you train them on site. And then um, what happens with all the investment if they leave your company after a couple of years? How do you feel about that? You know, um, you know the, uh, the the business is really about uh, playing. You know, really about batting average. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, you know, uh, when people have a better opportunity mm -hmm. somewhere else, you know, they were, they sh they should pursue it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't hold, we don't want to hold them back. And I hope we've done a good job to prepare those people. So when they decide to leave, okay, they have, you know, they've got uh, extra capability 
that they didn't, you know, they didn't have before. So that's what we wish. And, you know, so they can make impact or add value to other organizations. You know, so that's fine. I mean, you know, and we're constantly doing that. And, um, you know, things change. So um, we want to repay, re retain people. And, and we'll continue to do this. And, uh, you know, a lot of time our people now, they're really spending a lot of their own money. They hire you know, they hire a personal coach. You know, they take money out of their own pocket to do those things. Mm -hmm. And so all people really understand, you know, the importance of being mentored, being coached, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, you know, and, 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 and it really shows up at work too. Yeah. It really helps. Yeah. You know, you know, one of the things you've said in the past is that one of the, most important things on leadership around leadership is trust. And the people need to trust you, your people, that you really care for them, uh, for them to want to improve themselves. And I know you care about your people so much. You talk about it all the time. Where does that uh, care of, of the people, your people come from? I think you, you, know, you know you care more about your employees than most uh, bosses that I know. So where does that come from? Well, you know, um, I mean, you know, on the on the sort of on the surface, it's really, you know, uh, when you work for Panda, you know, we pay better, okay, and we we don't just talk about making money or numbers, right? We spend a lot of time on you on you personally. You know, we give you advices on, you know, how you should deal with finances. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, today, um, you know, I did not know this, but I mean, we have one of the best uh, uh, healthcare, uh, health insurance, mm -hmm. anywhere I know. Mm -hmm. our, our, our family, when they have a new kid, Okay, I have a new baby. You know, I often hear like, uh, oh, Andrew, you know, I have a new baby. You know how much I spend? I say, how much? He said, zero. Okay, that's, that's pretty good, right? It has to show up somewhere. You know, today I heard that one of our uh, parents, um, they had the special procedures just to uh, have a baby. That procedure is like, over $25,000, $28,000. And our, actually our insurance pays half of it, you mm -hmm. know? So, uh, you know, to take away some of these sort of a costly uh, things out of your hands, you know, even though they can afford it and they feel good, they know that, uh, that it shows up not only in sort of a, uh, how we express ourselves, in a practical terms is, you know, our bonus system is very generous. You know, our people, uh, the last store, as a general manager, the last store that I went to, uh, you know, MJ made $150,000 a year uh, last year, 2020. I said, that was very good, you know, and he's going to do that again this year. So, uh, uh, so, you know, it's a combination of things, right? You know, and, and you know, quality one-on-one -on -one time, you know, uh, you know, what are your challenges? And, you know, uh, how do we engage uh, in our, uh, how do we engage uh, with everyone? And that also takes, you know, the most needs a lot of training, you know, so when people are really working on themselves, and you know, you might not see it in a, a day or two, but you know, in the in the six month, a year, couple of years, you know, people gradually change. They become much more aware. You know, they they learn to do things that they didn't do well before. 
they they get to practice being a better version of themselves. And they're much more conscientious. They become better husband or better wife, better parents or better kid, better son and daughter to their, their parents. That's what we're trying to be. Fantastic. Peggy has also said one time, I remember seeing a video, she says, if you don't care of your associates, you have no right to say that you took care of your community. She seemed to see it also as a sort of a social responsibility kind of thing uh, to take care of her, to give your associates. Um, speaking of uh, philanthropy and community service, we just had a session on it uh, in the last hour, but Panda Cares has uh, raised and given away tons of money to a children's hospital. You personally also gave away to Caltech, uh, Feeding America. Um, so you're also very generous with uh, in terms of giving and the time you spent on, on, on those kind of efforts. Same, similar question as what I asked last time, where does that heart for philanthropy, where does that come from? You know, um, you know giving is a, is a practice. Uh, I'm, we're so blessed that we live in this great country. I mean, we have issues, you know, and, you know, um, giving is something that we practice. Out of giving, we actually learn so much about how to open our heart. You know, and when we first started the uh, Raise Money by our donation box, you know, uh, we were actually barely getting like a little over a million dollars, you know. And mm -hmm. I think 2019, during the pandemic, I mean, before the pandemic, 2019, we actually raised something like over $50 million. Oh, wow. You know, 50, over $50 million is a, it's a lot of money. But to think about it, you know, we ask a dollar or two at a time, and, and how many people step up, mm -hmm. that's uh, millions and millions and millions of ask, you know, from our uh, employees. Mm -hmm. And, well, you know, we also actually uh, take our associates to where we donate our money to, mm -hmm. so that they know why they're doing it, mm -hmm. so that they know the money actually goes to work for people that's uh, mm -hmm. you know less fortunate than us, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's really practical. Mm -hmm. You have to make it very practical, okay? Because I don't think you can force people to do things like that. Yeah. And the, the side benefit is when they care more, when they're able to care for other people, that care translates into better care for our guests as well. Mm -hmm. So we all benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Look, there's more in all of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's more, there's more in all of us. You know, as an organization, how do we get that out for everyone? That's our job, yeah. right? It's a practice. When I see you do more, I do more. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you're happy, and when you're smiling, when you're kind, I learn from that, you mm -hmm. know. So all the good habits, you know, they, um, it, it, that's, everyone has that kind of habit that creates a different environment. That environment allows the newcomers to say, okay, I want to work here. Mm -hmm. And that also allow people to say, you know, I like this place. Okay, so they get the survey to say, oh, you know, Panda is really a good place to work. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get on the becoming a, a employee of choice, right? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, we have much more to do. We have much more to do because it doesn't stop. You know, the culture can go up, okay, and culture can go down, okay? Mm -hmm. And so when more people are, are doing extra, more than, you know, more than just work. Uh, we all benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And so, Aaron, you know, we would never stop and try to improve that. Yeah. Do you think that maybe because you're privately owned, you can do things like offer health insurance 
offer bonus programs, give give money. You can do it more in a more easily, more flexibly, uh, because you're privately owned versus private equity or public traded and and other forms of uh, ownership. Well, I I think it's uh, uh, it is my personal philosophy, of course, to do it this way. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't run a public company. Thank goodness. You know. <laughs> Uh, you know, because you know the the the, the public company they have these quarterly, uh, you know, earning reports. You know, yeah. you have to hit the numbers, and and I think, you know, I think you can do both. Though. Mm-hmm. I think you can run a public company, mm-hmm. and and have a longer term view. Yeah. You know, I think we can. Well, we need to do it confidently. You know, because I think chasing number is a different company. You know, building a better environment, you know, I think that would benefit private company as well as public company. Yeah. What does it mean? I think you're getting your, um, you know, children more uh, accustomed to being owners. Uh, What does it mean for you, for the company to be a family owned in the future? Well, you know, I I would say, you know, the way we treat our family member, mm-hmm. uh, somewhat is very different than we treat mm-hmm. other people, right? You know, and I would say, you know, I often like to see that we treat uh, uh, um, we treat uh, everyone in the family like like they're ordinary uh, human beings, you know, but then, you know, we treat everyone else like their family <laughs> members, right? You know, that's a, that's a greater, you know, so everybody needs to be treated equally as much as we can equally treat it, you know, and to be conscious about that. Wow. You know, uh, as, a, as a family member in our business, we enjoy a lot of privileges, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, um, and we have to act very, we have to be very responsible and we have to be very grateful to what the business has afforded us. Mm-hmm. Incredible. I, w- I want to open it up for just a few questions. We don't have that much time, but um, I have a quick question. When is, uh, you know, I can't find Beyond Orange Chicken in a lot of Panda Expresses these days. Did you guys run out or what, what happened to it? We ran out so fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's what I, that's what I expected. Okay. Yeah, we, we did, we did, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, the combination of the uh, Beyond Orange Chicken and the Panda, you yeah. know, that uh, has like, you know, uh, uh, caused a quite a big uh, uh, impact and yep. so people came from all places i think i think uh, we ran out so fast that you know uh, we cannot even resupply resupply uh, it because uh, as you know that uh, doing this time there are everywhere there is you know a shortage of labor you know so and so we have some work to do I think, uh, you know, I think uh, we may have to build our own uh, uh, factory one day, you know, to just to, to, to deal with that ourselves. So, you know, when I was a grad student at UCLA in 1993, you just opened up the Panda uh, Express at Ackerman. So I ate tons of orange chicken. And uh, recently I was looking for the Beyond Chicken and I found it twice. And then after that, I was, uh, I was gone. So I've been, I've been looking at it, uh, keeping my eyes open. but. Okay. Um, Thank you for being such a loyal fan. Thank you. (laughs) Well, that's why I I was so excited to speak with you 10 years ago when you spoke, and then so excited to speak with you again today. But, um, uh, you know, one of the the questions, one of the things I remember from uh, my interview with you about 10 years ago is, I asked you this question, you know, when when do you realize that maybe you picked the wrong location because revenue is just not, 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 not rising, uh, and then when you when you you decide to give up on a location, do you remember what your answer was at the time? No, I don't. 
your answer was, why would you give up? <laughs> we work hard to uh, raise revenue. So I was like totally impressed with that, with that answer. So, you know, even though there's a big sign love um, in, your, in, your, in front of your organization, I think there's some, some determination, some toughness in your organization too. Would you, would you say that also? Well, you know, I think the greater love, you know, is, uh, is really to help people to help themselves, right? <laughs> you know, and that's a, such a, a workable, uh, you know, workable way of life, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, yeah, I would say, you know, you have to have some standard and you have to have some expectations, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think when we do a good job in explaining it and modeling it, people get it. You know, yeah. but you don't have to be tough. I mean, you know, I think um, I probably, um, you know, I, I probably have kind of softened, softened down a little bit, you know, but uh, over the years. Yeah. And uh, I, I figured, you know, the difference is, is the way you see things. It's not, you cannot force it to people. If people see what you see, they will do what you do. If they don't see what you see, you know, they won't get it. So our job is really about training and about educating people. And we have to do it, you know, we have to do it with love. To do it with love. It's, it's really incredible. But, but you say it is important to have high expectations. Well, you know, I, I do, I do, you know, I do say that. Mm -hmm. You know, in, 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 you know, in our business, the detail is the, you know, how do we do the little things exceptionally mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. you know? And, you, you know, when you work all day and you do the same thing day in and day out, right? That's not easy. Yep. You know, it seemed like, you know, hey, that should be easy. So we're creating really a, we're creating that habit. We're creating that, uh, that environment that pay attention to little things. Yeah, uh, yeah, keeping the restaurant clean, you know, and uh, you know, um, all that's you know, we actually don't stop at the rest restaurant, right? You know, we actually ask people to actually go home and organize their closet, clean <laughs> their cars. You know, one of my, you know, one of my wishes when you, uh, you know, get a teenager at your store. Okay, the objective would be when when we started would work with a teenager and they, they go home, the parents is really surprised to say, you know, what did you do to my kids? You know, they're cleaning their uh, uh, rooms, they're all, you know, and they're helping mommy uh, uh, with, with some home, housework and uh, they're really nice, you know, but that all those needs to be intentional. You know, and I think sometimes when the kids will learn more from, you know, outside experience than, than from their parents, right? You know, oh, so oh. We, want, we want to be helpful in that area as well. I don't think I need to send my teenager to work for you. Um, you know, I'm sure your kids are uh, pretty good to begin with. One is kind of messy, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one quick question before you end. Maybe you can answer in a quick way, whatever you want to share. What is your uh, succession plan currently? Uh, we're working on it. You know, we, uh, you know, we're actually getting a lot of help uh, to, uh, to discuss the issue first, you know. And, uh, and, you know, I'm 73 and I feel I'm still very young and getting prepared for it uh, is very, very important. I, we don't have a concrete plan right now, mm -hmm. you know, but we have some pretty good directions. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, by the way, one of your podcasts said, uh, actually wrote down my board, it says, you said we're all successful. No, we are successful and everyone is successful. And elevation is a way of life. I put it actually on my board from, uh, out of, uh, from listening to your podcast one time. So uh, you are also a source of my uh, inspiration, my uh, ideas and education. So thank you for uh, being a um, 
source of learning for me and I'm sure everybody who listened to you. Um, I think this has been a phenomenal session. Uh, it's truly been an honor to have you. Uh, great to see you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for sharing your, uh, your wonderful insight. You know, I, I, I would say, you know, without podcasts or without this uh, uh, interview, I would love to talk to you more because you make me feel so good. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think my, my, my associate Dalin would say I, I'm having bromance again with, uh, with, my, uh, with my guests. So, well, thank you again. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, thank you. It's thank my honor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John, again uh, for your introduction. And we'll get together. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed the session as much as uh, I did. Uh, and uh, I think this was a great session. And the previous two sessions are also phenomenal. So thank you, everybody involved in those sessions.